What happened? Because you were supposed to be here as a leader of the DNC, and all of a sudden you're still in Hawaii. As you know, I've been pretty vocal about calling out for more debates. I've been calling for uh, more debates to give the American people the opportunity to hear from these presidential candidates, to listen to what they've got to say, to hold them accountable for their views and their, their positions. Uh, because that differentiated from the decision that the chairwoman made from the DNC, uh, I was told that I was no longer welcome to come to the debate. So, so Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the dare, chair of the DNC, what you're saying is she ordered one of her aides to call up your, your staffer and say, you know what, don't come. Is that what happened? Uh, there was a conversation between her chief and my chief. Uh, Debbie's chief had called mine and basically uh, spoke about an interview that I had had, talking about the need and the call that the American people are having for more debates, for democracy, for increasing the engagement that we need in our society as we look to uh, see who will lead our country into the future. Uh, and uh, the, the prevailing message of that was because I continued to call for more debates that I uh, should not go to the debate there in Las Vegas. But really, Wolf, well, that's really the issue here. The issue here is not about me saying, boo-hoo, I'm going to miss the party. The issue here is one of democracy, of freedom of speech, and defending that which so many have sacrificed uh, and given their lives for. Have you called Debbie Wasserman Schultz? She's a, a congresswoman. She's the chair of the DNC. You know, I reached out to her after I got that message and didn't really... Uh, get much of a response uh, from her directly. She said she'd, she'd talk about it in person, but um, the message that her chief delivered to mine uh, stood. The DNC uh, put out a statement, spokeswoman Holly Shulman saying, among other things, saying all that was asked of Ms. Gabbard's staff was to prioritize our candidates and this important opportunity they have to introduce themselves to the American people. It went on basically suggesting that yeah, you, you should just keep on the positive and not talk about what, what you may disagree with the party chair on. Uh, and you were, also, you were also quoted as saying, when I signed up to be vice chair of the DNC, no one told me I would be relinquishing my freedom of speech and checking it at the door. Those are strong words on your part. Uh, those comments were, were not the comments that I got from my chief of staff from that conversation. But I can think of nothing more positive to talk about than the strength of our democracy the strength of the freedoms that we cherish and we celebrate here in our country, and calling for more opportunities for the American people to be able to hear from those who are offering to, to lead our country into the future. We've got some very important, huge challenges that are facing our country today that are taking us into the future, domestic issues, national security issues, issues relating to foreign policy, and the American people deserve more opportunities to be able to hear from those who are asking them to hire them to be president, to be commander in chief. Uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, campaign manager said on CNN earlier today, they have a ticket, they have a seat for you if you still want to fly over here to Las Vegas for tomorrow night's debate. Would you like to take him up on it? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to Senator Sanders for offering to, to give me a ticket to the debate. Uh, I politely declined to accept it because I think if I were to do that, then this would turn into a political conversation rather than a conversation about our principles, our democratic principles, our ideals as a country, and really what I think is most important for us to be focused on.